Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. Question 1 shows catalase, an enzyme catalyzing the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide. Some information about the extraction of catalase is given. You are asked to state one variable that should be standardized in the procedure to obtain the liquid carrot extract. In the first step, a buffer was used. Varying the volume would change the concentration of catalase in the resulting extract. When centrifugation is carried out, the speed and time should be standardized too. If the time is longer and the speed is faster, the degree of separation would be greater. The question asks about the extraction, not the enzymatic reaction. So, temperature is not a variable that has to be standardized. B. State the relationship between the time taken for the filter paper digs to rise to the surface of the hydrogen peroxide solution and the catalase activity of the liquid carrot extract. When a filter paper digs containing catalase is placed in a beaker of hydrogen peroxide solution, the enzyme starts to break down the hydrogen peroxide, oxygen bubbles form and stick to the paper digs, causing the filter paper to rise to the surface. Greater activity of catalase causes a faster formation of oxygen, which decreases the time it takes for the digs to rise. The student decided to investigate how catalase activity varies along the length of the carrot root. You are asked to identify the independent variable in this investigation. Since the student changes the distance and investigates how it affects the activity of catalase, the distance from the base of the shoot is the independent variable. The activity of catalase, which is indicated by the time taken for the paper digs to rise to the surface, is the dependent variable. 2 wants you to describe a method that the student could use to test the prediction. In a design experiment question, you must include the description of the three variables, important procedure, reliability, safety precautions, and a control set. List down all the points you want to include, then arrange them in a logical sequence. First, describe how the independent variable is fixed. You should have at least five values for this. We can use a knife to cut tissue from five different parts of the carrots on the cutting board. State the distances will give you another mark. For each distance, 20 grams of cut carrot is used to make the extract. This must be standardized as we do not want the difference in mass to affect the activity. Use a glass rod to stir the liquid carrot extract well before dipping the filter paper disc. The enzyme may not be evenly distributed on the disc if we do not stir it first. Then, a thermostatically controlled water bath was used to maintain the temperature of all carrot extract at 40 degrees Celsius. This is to prevent the rate of reaction changes due to the fluctuations of the temperature. 5 cm cube of hydrogen peroxide is added to 5 separate beakers. We must use the same volume as this affects the substrate concentration. Start the stopwatch immediately when the filter paper is placed in the beaker. A detailed description of how the dependent variable is measured should be included. In this case, we are using the stopwatch to measure the time taken for the filter paper digs to rise to the surface of the hydrogen peroxide solution. To increase reliability, we will make three replicates for each distance and calculate the mean value for each one of them. When writing about safety precautions, you have to identify the hazard, state the risks, and then describe the precautions taken. The hydrogen peroxide solution is corrosive. We should wear gloves throughout the experiment. Lastly, we will prepare a control set. A control set is there to prove that the dependent variable is affected only by the independent variable and not any other factors in the experiment. So, we can prepare a disc deep in buffer solution only for the experiment. This will show that the rise of the disc is due to the presence of carrot extract. D shows another investigation which determines the effect of hydrogen peroxide concentration on the activity of catalase in yeast. In this experiment, hydrogen peroxide and yeast suspension are mixed in a test tube. The catalase in yeast will break down hydrogen peroxide, resulting in the formation of oxygen bubbles. The dependent variable in this investigation is the volume of gas collected after one minute, as this is the measurement we take to determine the activity of catalase. Do not state what the measurement indicates 
such as activity of catalase or the rate of catalase reaction, as that was not what we measured directly. Note that volume of gas produced after one minute is not accepted as we only measure the gas collected in the syringe. We did not measure all the gas produced in the test tube. Two wants you to show how proportional dilution of a 6% stock solution is done to obtain another four concentrations. Distilled water is used to mix with the stock solution to dilute it. To calculate the stock solution and distilled water needed for each concentration, you can use the formula M1V1 equals to M2V2. M1 is the concentration of the stock solution and V1 is the volume needed. M2 and V2 are the concentration and volume of the new solution made. Let's use the 3.6% hydrogen peroxide as an example. The stock solution we have is 6%. V1 is what we're trying to find out. We are now preparing a 3.6 solution, so this is our M2. The question says that we are preparing 50 cm3 of each solution, so this is our V2. V1 is equal to 30 cm3. This means that 30 cm3 of 6% solution is needed to prepare 50 cm3 of 3.6% solution. With that said, we must add 20 cm3 of distilled water to dilute it to a 3.6% solution. By using the same formula, you can calculate the rest of the values. 3 wants you to use the information shown in figure 1.7 to evaluate the conclusions made by the student. The command word evaluate means that you have to discuss how the data supports and does not support the conclusions. You can't just talk about one side of it. For the do not support parts, you can also discuss if the data is sufficient or valid for making conclusions. The first conclusion can be supported by quoting the data from the graph. The graph shows a positive correlation between the concentration of hydrogen peroxide and the volume of oxygen collected. The second conclusion cannot be supported by the graph. To know the Vmax, we need to take the plateau part of a graph as it shows the maximum rate of reaction at a high substrate concentration. The graph we have here has not leveled off. It is still increasing, indicating that the maximum rate of reaction has not been reached. Besides, the data may not be sufficient to conclude. Only five concentrations of hydrogen peroxide are being used. We do not know if the trend is the same if we use a wider range of concentrations. The reliability of the data is low too. There are no replicates made for means calculation. Lastly, we can't prove that all the gas collected is oxygen. Other gases might be collected and measured, decreasing the validity of the data. Question 2 talks about the sea trout and their sea lice infections. It is believed that there is a link between the increase of fish farming and the infection. Some scientists decided that each wild sea trout with 13 or more salmon lice is at risk of physiological stress and potential death. A wants you to outline a method that could be used to determine the number of salmon lice needed to cause the death of a sea trout and suggest a suitable control. We can raise sea trout in a container. Then, add sea lice to the container. When a trout dies, take it out and count the number of sea lice on it. There is more than one way to do this. If your method is sensible, you will get the mark. Some other suggestions include adding lice to the trout's body directly, keeping trout with different numbers of lice in different containers, and seeing which of the trout dies. In a method describing question, there is usually one mark for the control variables. Any name environment or condition in the container that should be maintained as constant can get you this mark. You can also suggest the control variables related to the trout or the lice. For example, the mass of the trout and the mass of the sea lice. To prepare a control set to confirm that it is the salmon lice that are causing the death, we should repeat the investigation with a container of trout with no lice present. Their survivor will prove this. In B, scientists want to test if the infections are higher in the second year of the two-year production cycle. They use electrofishing to capture sea trout and count the number of sea lice on them. 1. State one variable that should be standardized in this procedure other than the boat and the hand net. The location of the boat and the sampling site should be standardized. This is because, in different regions of the water, the population size of sea lice may not be the same. Sampling in different areas lead to differences in the number of sea lice on trout that are not caused by the year in the cycle. 
the electric current should also be standardized. A change in the current may affect the sizes of the fish being captured. This results in a different number of lights due to their different sizes. Lastly, sampling should be done at the same time of the year. Seasonal changes can affect the population size of an organism. For example, during the breeding season or when the environmental conditions are favorable for reproduction, there will be more lice present on trout. Tu says that electrofishing is more likely to prevent movement in larger fish. You are asked to state why this systematic error may give results that are not representative of the wild sea trout population. If the movement of smaller fish is less likely to be affected, the younger trout will not be caught. The lice number on trout only represents the larger and older trout in the population. C shows us the data of the research. 1. Explain why the scientists calculated the percentages of sea trout with attached salmon lice. Comparing the numbers directly is not a valid comparison as the number of sea trout sample is not the same. When the sample size is larger, there will be more trout with lice. It does not show the effect of the year of the production cycle. Table 2.2 shows the mean values for year 1 and 2 in the cycle. 2 wants you to describe the evidence that supports the conclusion that a greater number of wild sea trout are at risk of death in the second year. The earlier part of this question mentioned that sea trout with 13 or more salmon lice is at risk of physiological stress and potential death. So, you should compare the number of trout with 13 or more lice in year 1 and 2. You can either quote both figures or manipulate them by calculating the difference. 3. Suggest limitations of the data shown in Table 2.1 and Table 2.2 that reduce confidence in this conclusion. To answer this question, you should look for data that do not support the idea that the risk of death is greater in year 2. You can also comment on the reliability of the data or the validity of the comparison. Even though in most of the production cycles, the percentage of trout with 13 or more lies is greater in year 2, there is an exception. In 2004 and 2005, there is no difference between year 1 and year 2. The data collected may not be reliable due to the small sample size. In each year, there are only a small number of sea trout being sampled. Besides, only five production cycles are being studied. The data may not be sufficient to make a reliable conclusion. Lastly, no statistical test was carried out for comparison. We do not know if the difference between year 1 and 2 is significant. D talks about another investigation to determine if the number of attached salmon lice on wild sea trout will decrease as the distance from the nearest fish farm increases. 1. State a null hypothesis the scientists would make before carrying out statistical analysis. We are now testing the correlation between two variables. So, the null hypothesis is that there is no significant correlation between them. Note that we always say that there is no significant correlation. You should not change this based on the data. The next question wants you to indicate if the results are significant or not significant. In a statistical test, if p, the probability value, is greater than 0.5, we would accept the null hypothesis. So, we reject the null hypothesis for Ireland and accept it for Scotland. With that said, there is a significant difference for Ireland and it is not significant for Scotland. Figure 2.3 shows the results. The error bars are included. The error bars show 95% confidence intervals. This means there is a 95% chance that the true or population mean value is within the range of the error bar. 3 wants you to state the relationship between the two variables. As the distance increases, the mean number of lies per trout decreases. This is called a negative correlation. 4 wants you to suggest why the scientists calculate the 95% confidence interval for their data. As I mentioned just now, the error bars show that there is a 95% probability that the true, actual, or population mean lies within this range. Besides, by checking the overlapping of the error bars, we can determine if the difference between two mean values is significant. For example, for Ireland, 
the aero bars for 5 and 21 km do not overlap. There is a significant difference between the two means. For Scotland, all the aero bars overlap. This means that there is no significant difference between all of the mean values. Lastly, error bars are generated by using standard error. So, you can use the definition of standard error to answer this question. It is a measurement of how close the calculated mean is to the true mean. The smaller the standard error, the shorter the error bar. Hence, the closer the true mean is to the calculated or sample mean. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.